Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen again. And this is um, welcome to the artist talk today with Beatriz Miorca. We are certainly happy to have her here today. Beatriz is one of the very talented uh, artists that are currently featured in the Tulsa World Lorton Family Gallery. And we hope that you come out and see this amazing exhibit um, that is uh, up through April 17th. And we will have opportunity for an in-person meet and greet with the artists from 5 to 7 p.m. on Thursday, April 8th. That is um, a situation that's going to be very safe. You need to register online at oklahomahof.com prior to uh, visiting. So you'll have a timed ticket. Masks are required. There's limited capacity and uh, we'll be practicing social distancing. So Beatriz is from Venezuela. She's an artist and interior designer, but she's lived in the United States since 2005. She graduated with a degree in social communication from the Central University of Venezuela, but her passion for the arts and design made her seek a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Central Oklahoma. Beatriz crafts different art forms from sculptures to unique furniture and lighting design, and you can see all those in the gallery right now. She also executes public art, which I'm excited she's going to be talking about a little bit today. So her roots extend from the coastal culture of the Caribbean, the Andes Mountains, to the Amazon rainforest. As a contemporary Hispanic artist, Beatriz found that working outside of her country of origin gave her a new meaning to her creations, which are not based in traditional representations of Venezuelan crafts, but she uses wood, metal, and modern lines as part of her work. She sees herself as a global artist whose cultural inheritance infuses each of her designs. Beatrice, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Donny. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And I want to egg my tent. Uh, I'm going to explain my journey. Uh, I will need to, to explain my journey. Sorry, we need to start uh, where I came from. As you know, I am from Venezuela, uh, from a family of engineers, but also constantly involved in the art, in the academia, in craft and music, both folk music and classical music. And all this really uh, shape what I am today. No? Considering all this, I will take you through uh, my influence and inspiration and as an artist and a designer from my very start to my most recent projects. And in particular, how play function play and function, sorry, represent essential part in my development as an artist and in my artistic creation. Uh, you can uh, go to the next, oh, no, not this one, okay. Uh, uh, here you can see how <clears throat> I had a wonderful gift on life to be able to be born and live only three miles uh, from the Henry Pichier National Park and where I had the great, great opportunities to grow up and surround myself with this magic place. Uh, it is the old, old national park in Venezuela. It is uh, characterized by its climatic diversity, but being its cloud forests, one of this, these part most prominent features, ending with the enormous and beautiful Caribbean Sea. Uh, you, I, I want to talk a little bit more later how this uh, space of this area, of this natural area, uh, influenced me in, in my pieces. But on the in that slide, uh, Donna is showing uh, is also part of my roots. It is where my mom is from, and that is the plains of Venezuela, is the south area of Venezuela, and I spent a lot of a lot of my childhood there, and playing with a literal wildlife. Uh, um, how I can say, uh, well, memories. Uh, next. It's like 
Uh, as you already know, I will work heritage by UNESCO. But as a part of my engineering family, I went to the Central University to study engineering, but few years later, I changed the major uh, and go to Bachelor of Math Communication. All this year, absolutely working uh, through this beautiful modern architecture has been one of the most significant influence practice today, in my practice today, and I still, you can see how concrete uh, and the bright colors and and in particular, how the, the mix of the way the architect uh, used the artwork to inlay the structure, um, to inlay the art into the structure of the building uh, is one of the, uh, the first thing uh, ingredients uh, to flavor my artistic path. Uh, that is another example. Uh, the last one, uh, can you stop a little bit, uh, Donna, can go back where you are here? Okay, no, go to the R, sorry. Go to the, that one. Uh, here is the uh, the library, uh, the, the university, the Fernand Liger is an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, sculpture that always have been in my mind. And always, I also did the, the first decal for the university uh, based on that uh, sculpture. On the next slide, you can see how uh, the, the Alexander Calder, the flooring clouds were as a part of the building, but not only as a, uh, as the art to decorate the room, but also to work in a functional way as a acoustic panels. Um, by 2005, uh, I moved to uh, to Oklahoma. Uh, with my husband was transferred to work here. And when we moved with our two boys, which back then were six years and five years old. Uh, let's be honest, uh, with two little kids, I didn't have too much time, but I managed somehow uh, to learn enough English to go back to college. Um, uh, by 2007, next slide, uh, this is, I, I, Start in the University of Central Oklahoma in my interior design bachelor and art that I focus on a sculpture. Here is one of my first sculpture um, where I start use materials that I speak for themselves, very industrial materials. Where here is a, a discovery the beauty of the composition that I create with the plywood lamination technique, the metal, natural fiber, and I fall in love, literally fall in love with the, the lines that the veneer of the lamination technique uh, creates, um, and all this natural movement. Um, by next, by the end of my, my, my studies there by 2011, I start to create my art pieces that seduce the viewer and define gravity and imply functionality. Uh, but at the same time, surprise, surprise the spectator with the materials used, such as concrete. And also I start introducing the play as a way to bring a good and pleasant memories to the viewer. Uh, all these pieces I create with that playfulness um, uh, concept they go on into my playfulness uh, collection. This is a machine tile. I have a one similar in a small uh, dimensions uh, or similar concept on, on, on view right now uh, on the museum. Uh, on the next slide is the is a piece that also is in the museum, the, the Newton Crater Ball. Uh, where I really wanted to achieve on our piece that bring uh, us a good memories uh, of past interaction with this type of object. I am pretty sure that most of you 
play with the neutron crater balls. There are 10 diameter, uh, 10 diameter uh, concrete balls hand using fishing nylon. And again, a piece that implies functionality and wonder by the media use. Here I use concrete again to define gravity and also considering the ways of how to use concrete in a no heavy form uh, to challenge not only myself as an artist, but also bring curiosity to the viewer, to the viewer it, um, about like a, how she made it post that possible. Uh, as you can see in that final piece of the of the playful collection, I style, uh, I, I utilize play. I need to move here the, the square of zoom play. Uh, to create the spirit and the light with flair of unexpected and elevate my design beyond functionality. That is a, a interactive piece. Uh, it is not right now in the museum, but it's the way that I, um, I can show how play it is part, important part of my design. Uh, you can move this. That is the one that I'm talking about right now. And, and as you know, there is a resemblance of the tic-tac-toe uh, that most of you play or still play. On the next slide, uh, I, because I wanted to work and go back to utilize a lamination technique. I retain the use of the plywood keeping in the implied functionality. I use as primary processor here the plywood lamination and hand bending technique to explore and challenge its boundaries, but always intending to captivate the viewer by repetition of the veneer lines. Uh, I always use have a concept behind. This is a piece that uh, looks for, or is inspired on the alchemist alchemist uh, novel of the Pablo Coelho. This is a series always start with the beginner log and end with the death of the conqueror. And I feel a very, a lot of identification here that like when we, when I move here, it's, a, it's kind of a start again, no? Uh, and that was actually in 2012 and I was starting that um, path, my artistic path. Um, on the next, you can then, uh, because I feel like uh, even though I, I love art and but I, I need it, I feel like I need a, some part of the interior, the interior design um, that I was leaving behind. So I started to develop actual functional pieces using lamination process, the same lamination process. Uh, here are a couple of them. I, I, I also use um, uh, made a, a series of lamps. Uh, I have in the next slide, you can see the ones that I have right now in, in the show. This is one of the examples. I have two more there uh, that I call a bold lamp uh, because even though it's a very clean look that will mix the lamination technique and also the concrete base and the stained concrete. I love all the the natural uh, elements and the colors that we can create that I can create that with the stained colors, but also the paint of the wall that you use that uh, bring a completely different meaning, a, com a completely different feeling. Right now, the lamp has a vintage ball that look completely different how it looks in this picture. Right now with some modern uh, sleek uh, ball. Um, on the later on, uh, I big uh, on the next slide as uh, you can see that as in my past world that I work my work is big I tend to like I don't know even though I wanted to work in a small it's difficult been difficult for me just uh, scale it down and um, but I want to also create a world that um, people can interact with it. I use uh, uh, the opportunity uh, when the Oklahoma Science Museum invited me to participate in its soundscape show back in uh, 2013. 
um, where I made a uh, huge oversight wind shine. Again, this is a, uh, it was an inspiration from the, from the, my memories um, in the Henry Pittier and the forest of the Henry Pittier uh, Park. On the same, same, the next slide, you can uh, see how the all, all, the whole piece look and the interaction that uh, the viewer can can have with that piece. Uh, the different halos wooden sticks could be moved by the visitor producing sound while the wooden um, halo sticks were strikes to each other. Uh, that is a very intensive process. Repetition is one of the things I really enjoy. I feel like the creation of, of, of the general composition by repetition is, uh, I adore it. Um, um, the next slide can show you um, the intense process that and very detail oriented process. Uh, they is my process start on a small piece of paper, but then it's a lot of thinking and constant development. My work tend to be very precise and detail oriented in, in a lot of calculation to then finish with a dedicated handcraft period. Um, Every single of the hollow pieces, the wooden pieces was handmade and all the lamination was handmade and then sanded together and stained it. I, I was able to, the top part, use the CNC uh, uh, technology, uh, bringing uh, or using that new technology that is available to the artist right now. Uh, uh, the next slide can show you the how the piece look all the ways. Uh, as you can see, this work is in, in the round piece uh, that makes the viewer walk around, interact with it and discover the forms and relationship between the art and its surrounding. Um, later on, and following my uh, inspiration from nature, the next slide show you again that my center of inspiration is nature. Um, it played a significant role. Here is the Kata Bay, a beach where I practically spent most of my childhood and young adult life. My parents had actually an apartment here in this building, V014, I always want to remember. And it's about 30 minutes from my house. And that was, uh, my life there, like uh, all my life, all weekends, all vacations, all uh, every single time that we can go with the friends, we were there. You know? And from this piece was inspired a share that is on view right now at the museum. I add how this piece, this piece was inspired by that Kata Bay. And you can change, you can follow the slide, the slide, next slide, Donna. And looking to add more to see, with this piece I wanted to look more or um, to challenge myself and use the lamination technique also by, but uh, using uh, the fashion craftsmanship bending technique, but uh, steam uh, bend, bending, I told myself that, uh, that machine, I also build my own uh, uh, steam box that is actually a pretty big steam box to be able to put all this laminate piece of plywood. Um, and I can say Kata Share is one of the pieces that won the 2016 the Academy of Handmade Award uh, and was selected also for the Vision Maker Biennial in, of the uh, 108 Contemporary in Tulsa. Um, always on the on one of the other pieces that is on the on the show is inspired from nature and from my experience as a as a as a kid uh, 
uh, in Venezuela. On the next slide, you can see uh, the canoes, the, the canoes, uh, Venezuelan canoes on the Caura River. Uh, that is a part of the wildlife that I had fishing uh, caribes or piranhas. Um, we ate them and we loved them. And, and was experiencing a wonderful experience. And the texture and the craftsmanship it also bring me a lot of memory, a lot of, lot of memory, the part of South America, the South Venezuela, not South America too. Um, unforgettable childhood memories. And where I constant, the constant wild content and this nature really was prominent. Uh, from there, you can see the next, the next slide the my canoe stools. Um, they are like a resemble of these canoe uh, uh, boats uh, in a very clean and, and minimal lines, always using the lamination technique that lines, the line veneer that uh, all the plywood lamination create really, really uh, uh, enchanting me and I really love that texture and that lines in my work. But looking for more or bring more to the table and, and because I wanted to actually uh, be in contact with more people, uh, you can go, oh, go next Donna and, and you I decide to in my quest to reach the general public, public uh, to go back and work with uh, more uh, strong material. And I knew that I needed to work with permanent materials to create outdoor pieces to be enjoyed by general people. So I went back to work in concrete uh, by more significant dimensions. And I started incorporating more metal war or different types of metal war into my creation. I have the extraordinary opportunity to have my studio space on David Felt building. He's a national, international, also a sculpture that I love him with all my heart and has been the great inspiration and great support. Uh, uh, and great example of hard work uh, for me all this year. I already have, I can't believe, but I think I have also almost 10 years there. Uh, eight years there. Uh, uh, for this, taking this approach and working the, uh, uh, as concrete again, uh, you can go on the next slide and you are also going to see one of the pieces that is on the show right now that I call Life. Uh, that is a sitting group. Uh, where I start missing the concrete natural beauty with colorful glass mosaic tiles applied over a previous ported piece. Uh, as always, uh, it's a concept behind, and I feel how life is, and the text say there, life is color, if movement is movement, adaptation, ups, down, it is concrete, and life is organic too. No, uh, it is a process, a lot of process there. And here you can see in, uh, the intensive process, the from the preliminary sketches, color combination, renderings, the calculation, I, uh, the cut work, I have things for the material design, but ground, I have the ability to work in cut uh, to achieve in the way I can achieve a very precise work. The ferro cement. I use a ferro cement technique, uh, and to create the form in a very thin space, I really, really need to be very precise and detail oriented. In this technique, the concrete piece is reinforced with a structural metal work inside. There are a lot of hours of then of polishing the concrete to then finish with the most relaxing by by but sorry, time consuming mosaic artwork. Uh, uh, that is the part 
even though I go work all the process and all the heaviness and the welding of the metal, the, the structure and the concrete and the, the polishing and all that is very heavy work. This part of the art mosaic work is kind of the gift of the art to me. I really, really, really enjoy that part because I kind of rest and can see how the colors come coming together. Um, and the, to the finished work. Uh, next, and try and always challenge myself. Uh, I uh, started using or pouring the concrete, but with the same ferro, ferro cement technique, uh, but with the tile work inside uh, of the mold, uh, which is going to be revealed the final design when the concrete is, fine, is polished. Uh, this is a very risky mold, uh, uh, war because those tiles can move uh, with, when, when I pour the concrete, but I managed to, to with very, very delicate war to be able to create a, a complete and beautiful uh, concept. Uh, the roof chair, as I call them, uh, we said also selected for the 2018 Vision Merke Viennia. Uh, they are on view right now on the on the on the museum. And the thanks to Mrs. Meg Sailor because they are part of her permanent art collection. Uh, the, this chair are inspired by all this natural fauna and ecological connection that I have with my nature, with nature and part of my roots as Hispanic uh, artist. You can see the, the war is on, only in front, but also on the back. And you can see roots here and the part of the, the, the sea and my contact with the part of the sea, but also we contact with the forest and the botanical and all the, the, the nature that I was uh, used to it. Uh, and all this work in concrete, when I started that pro processing, doing these concrete pieces, take me to my next work and open the door to my next work what that this uh, a group of Siri that was a possible thing for a uh, in the Invitation uh, Artist Award that I won with the downtown Oklahoma City uh, uh, back in 2017. The award was installed in 2008 and where it is right now, uh, where I installed on the High Tower Park. Uh, this is a, what actually was the opening door to wet my feet into the public art field a goal that I had from the very, very start of this career and I begin to love, love it even more with the practice. Uh, again, bring art to the public and create art uh, that is part of the architecture or, or play with the architecture of, or its surrounding. Uh, next slide can show you uh, how uh, it look, uh, all the searing uh, group looks, and it is in a pocket part located on the Harris and Town, Oklahoma City, uh, right in front of the Oklahoma City Art Museum and next to a city hall. Uh, this opportunity gave me the complete understanding of what it's meant to work with a public entity and open the doors, as, as I said before, uh, of where I can perfectly mix my artistic approach with my design background, my humanist and architecture love. Um, and follow this path. Uh, and actually this war on my war from concrete uh, gave me the opportunity, as you see on the next slide, uh, of the experience that um, the create a proposal for Texas State University. Uh, well, this is part of the proposal, the proposal for the general proposal for the 
their athletics dining facility. But my uh, functional art work doesn't stop in benches or in seating. Uh, you can see on the next slide uh, that my functional artistic approach go or move or to uh, another, we can say a street furniture that is uh, this as this this group of a sculptural uh, bike racks. They are on here in Oklahoma City on the McKinley Park. And I was possible thanks to the strong neighborhood university and the class in Tempen neighborhood uh, for the war. And there was an opening for that. And I'm glad that I was able to do it. I am uh, for this is a simple, simple contemporary design that produces richness and flexibility of experience with an economy of a design principle as a design principle. This work, as many of my work, are represented by precise geometry forms with repetitive elements to achieve actual uh, or visual depth of movement, but always inviting the specter of the viewer or the user to interact with, with the piece uh, and to achieve visual balance with the project site and nature of the artwork surrounders. I approach my design with a larger scale in mind, always uh, provoking the viewer, engaging curiosity and creating conceptual presence in its surrounding. Uh, this is a piece that moves the pain where you you are you stand that it looks different. The pain of the sun, the shadow that it creates is a beautiful. They are beautiful and, and of course they move the pain the, the the time of the day. And to end and to leave you time for question, I want to and keep working with my playfulness approach. This is my last word that I installed last December at the Capitol Hill Library that I call Never Stop Dreaming, The Sky is the Limit, and where playful and playfulness and functionality go all the way hand in hand. This is a, a sculptural shade structure uh, that, that tied together my work itself. Uh, it's characteristic, uh, my work is characteristic by bringing memories and pleasant moments and playful atmospheres and impressions, but always considering the, um, the environment, the social and cultural conditions that can influence or can be influenced by my artistic solution. In this particular project, um, the Capitol Hill want to emphasize uh, the story of that side where the first airplane in Oklahoma City take off, but also uh, the functionality of the library, like an origami uh, represent a lot of the uh, curricula, like I represent math, non art and, and uh, art, liberal art or science or therapy. Uh, represent a lot of curricular uh, curriculum, but also is represent the community that is around it. There's a lot of Latin Hispanic community and that uh, flying pepper light origami airplanes uh, bring and the color and the and the happiness and the always the laughing that I when I see or I think about the Hispanic community has. Um, to, well, as you can see by the end of my presentation, not only I thank you, but I want to say to finish that I utilize place, play as a driving force force of my creative spirit, my creative spirit to the light with a flare of the unexpected and elevate with a, uh, with my design vision functionality. Um, those artworks have a vision behind them uh, that see the world in a pure 
beautiful human way, purposely uh, defying the childhood or the child innocence uh, that we have, that all of us has, but sometimes we forgot that it's still there um, and bring it back, no? Uh, there are getaways ways to include enjoy and enter into a world that raise exciting memory uh, and breaking people out of their everyday routine. Uh, again, thank you so much. And if you have any question, please, I'm here to you. Thank you so much, Beatriz. I, I think that we all appreciated hearing um, about your art, but also seeing those lovely photos, which made me feel um, like I was there for So thank you for sharing that part of your history and your roots um, with us. I really liked how you shared that, um, that you try to continue kind of challenging yourself with your artwork, but I'm wondering if, there was one piece that came earlier on that maybe was more of a challenge than you anticipated. What do you, what do you I, think? I think all my pieces are very challenging. My husband always say, why you they always do something different when with art? <laughs> I know I cannot do at the same piece every, every time, every, every, every day. But I always challenge myself. I see always, I try to experiment and see different, different things and create different, uh, our views and our technique and also I am very very uh, excited for what is next yeah well I, I think that excitement surely um comes through to us as as you explain these pieces and and show us the the you know the path that you have been on um what do you think is um kind of the the best thing that you enjoy about having so much of your work available to the public Uh, can you ask, ask again, sorry? Yeah, I said, um, what is it that you enjoy most about having your art available to the public in parks and libraries and things? Uh, I, each time actually when I pass next to my pieces and I see people there, for example, in the downtown, the Syrian area that in downtown, I see people there not only using now, they use, they use the space because that was a space that doesn't, it's only was a, a, a pathway, but uh, it, now I see people camping there or just laying on the, on, on, on the bench or reading or waiting for the bus. Like I really see, okay, okay that's, I, I did my work, no? So you see them getting to enjoy it. That's yes, wonderful. enjoy and open, uh, because you not only enjoy the art, they open the, the space uh, for another type of activity, no? Because then maybe I don't see people sitting there, but maybe they are sleeping there. They are, because they feel like and maybe they are safe, no? It's not an empty space, they are safe there. So it adds to the safety of the space to have yeah. the public art there. It makes it something a little more comforting than Exactly. Cool. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, I just want to remind our viewers that if you want to put any questions for Beatriz in the chat or the Q&A, we will do our, our best from sharing for sharing. Um, I want to share with you a couple of comments that we have uh, received in the chat, Beatriz. Um, one of them was, uh, I took my five-year-old nephew to the museum today. He was fascinated by your Newton's cradle balls and wanted to know why you made that. He kept asking, but why did she want to make that? <laughs> uh, I guess I was, as your child, I love, I remember an aunt uh, that have one, I love playing with that. And it was uh, looking for the playfulness uh, show that I did with the three pieces uh, that won't come to my mind, I feel, try to challenge the how made the concrete hang a fishing nylon and, and I think that was uh, like something that I really really wanted to do. Yeah. Well, I, I plus I, the, the repetition and the precision of the work, uh, how it's low because you need to hang that very very precise and that is a part of the attention to detail that really really 
really catch my attention. Uh, and, and, and it, it looks great in the gallery and I'm very mm -hmm. glad you came by to hang it so precisely. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing and I'm glad I didn't have to try to facilitate that. So it's interesting to me this kind of almost contradiction in your work because a lot of your work is about play, but a lot mm -hmm. of your work is also about precision yes. and see kind of this tension in that which which one do you think dominates you really, the play or the precision? I, I think the precision. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I may not play too much when I try to, I am designing them. <laughs> yeah. So but you just, if you go back to actually playing the, the toys, they have a lot of work involved and a lot of precision and a lot of guidelines that you need to follow to be able that that kid can play with that little toy. Yeah. So it's part of it's part of what makes the play happen, I guess, yeah, and so precision. <laughs> so it works right. Yeah. Well, um, so can you tell us you've, you've just finished this this installation at the at the library? What's what's on your plate next? What have you got cooking? In I there? am finished also uh, artist in resident on the UCO University of Central Oklahoma, and last year was a very well down for everyone. I won in 2019 the Society of Art and Craft uh, uh, Fellowship. Uh, which I supposed to use in 2020, but all was canceled. I was opportunity to improve my my shop, and as just I fit, want to finish my 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 artist in residence because that take me a lot of time. I want to jump in a new a new path. I want to learn a few different techniques in metal and use a lot of the new tools that I have right now. Well, I think it's really impressive the number of techniques that you are already using in materials that are not necessarily traditionally taught at the university setting. So have you had to exactly. seek other learning opportunities outside of university quite a lot in order to do the, to employ these kind of um, utilitarian materials? Mm -hmm. And right now I am working a lot with uh, computer technology and three-dimensional uh, computer wife and Rhino and see how I can help my precision work there and then, tra and then transfer to a coding machine or something that makes my life easier. Because sometimes I feel very, very tired after all this pieces. <laughs> I can imagine, and just so our audience knows, you need to come and see these pieces, but um, some of them are quite heavy. I mean, when you're incorporating concrete and metal and wood like this, they're, they're very heavy pieces. And um, so I, I imagine that there's a lot more physical work here than just making them precise. <laughs> this is a labor of love. <laughs> well, I got to take that, labor of love. <laughs> Go for it. Huh. All right, well, um, and I, I have another comment here that says, thank you for sharing your artwork. The colors and the precision of your work certainly makes me happy. The benches seem to invite the audience to stop and be happy. So um, I wanna invite our audience to come on out to the museum and stop and be happy in the gallery and enjoy because um, unlike most pieces in the gallery, Beatrice has allowed our visitors to actually be able to stop and rest on those benches that um, are titled life. So come on out and touch them and enjoy seeing the precision <laughs> and feeling the precision uh, in those lovely works and enjoying the, and enjoying the art. Um, Beatrice's work is joined by the artist um, Benaz um, Sarabian, who was in our last uh, artist talk, and also by Tammy Brummel, who will be featured in an artist talk next Friday. So make sure that you sign up for those and be sure to sign up for the artist meet and greet, which will be Thursday, April 8th from 5 to 7 p.m. Um, Maddie is going to put in the chat the location of the virtual exhibit that we have created for uh, Beatrice exhibit so you can see play and function and all the works that are part of that uh, there uh, on that um, actual uh, site. So be sure and click through and see that and then there's also access to several other virtual exhibits. 
So uh, Beatrice, I think Thanks. before before we go, before we go, um, I just want to give you a chance to say, um, again, I, I was writing this down. It says, so you feel like your work has three things that it that it's provoking to the viewer. It creates curiosity. And then there was one other thing that I missed. And I was just wondering if you can tell us what that was. Provoke the viewer, create curiosity. I think it said something about play. Uh, uh, I think it's like a quick uh, interact with a piece, no? Yeah, to give them an opportunity so to take engage. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's amazing. And think what, what do you know it is and think how how that that was possible like you create a curiosity but think about is no this is a bench or no there is a wall hanging there how that happened no okay so just kind of seeing how thinking about the process itself as being part of of the piece and um i really encourage you guys to follow beatrice on social media so you can see what what she's up to and see other pieces of hers around downtown and other places in oklahoma city but be sure and also stop by the museum and see them while we're here thank you so thank much you, thank, you, everyone. thank you thank you thank so you thank you great to have you here <laughs> thank you all so much for being here and uh we hope to see you soon at the museum <laughs>